<laughs> so, uh, how many of you guys know that uh, THC and marijuana can actually kill you? <laughs> uh, it actually, you have to get uh, thousands of dollars, buy 1,500 pounds, and then smoke it in an hour all to yourself. And, uh, hypothetically, for the DEA, you can, you can effectively get a lethal dose. Um, so it's, it's pretty far-fetched to actually die from marijuana, and that's, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. But uh, what I also know is, is you guys, like Mr. Kirkham said, he hears it every year. I'm going to actually try to uh, approach it in a different way and not tell you something that you all know. Uh, most of you guys know pretty much the basic facts about marijuana. And uh, actually 35% of you, um, according to statistics, actually smoke marijuana regularly, which is uh, three to four times uh, a month. Four to nine. <laughs> and um, what I'm also going to talk about today too is uh, like, kind of like recent research, uh, recent research that's happened that's kind of like this year research, uh, taxation benefits that directly affect you guys um, and me, uh, and um, how marijuana being illegal also affects uh, you and me. Um, so we all know marijuana is a safer, um, a safer uh, alternative to alcohol and to tobacco uh, that kills hundreds of thousands of people every year. Um, but uh, what a lot of people thought for the longest time, and what I actually thought to myself, is uh, that it causes lung cancer. But uh, there was actually just a 20-year that I finished this year, a 20-year study done at UCLA um, by the medical group there on over uh, two th on over 1,800 um, patients, um, 1,000 healthy patients. 400 with cancer, and uh, 400 who actually smoke cigarettes. Uh, obviously, the cigarette smokers, they found lung cancer like crazy, and uh, you know, shortens your life and all that stuff. Um, in the healthy patients, they found no signs of cancer whatsoever. Uh, so the whole point of this uh, research project was to actually find a link between cancer and marijuana, and they couldn't find any link. And then the, the uh, thing that actually caught them off guard was, and uh, they didn't, say, but they only said it suggests that it actually helps uh, prevent cancer. That's all they said in the research. They didn't, they didn't give me any, any, they didn't want to go into it too much because that's not what they're trying to prove. But they said they actually found some suggestions that it helps prevent cancer in patients. Um, and then um, one thing I kind of want to like uh, just kind of disprove here is uh, uh, the gateway theory on marijuana. That's like kind of like the one major argument for it are against it. Uh, it's pretty much saying like if you do marijuana, you're going to go into harder drugs. But uh, one thing that uh, I like, that, like that I think about that a lot of people don't is, is uh, you know, we, we all know someone who smokes marijuana or someone who does smoke. Uh, I'm going to have to say more than 90% of those people drink alcohol first. So does that make alcohol a gateway drug? And uh, that's kind of like one thing I wanted to let you guys know, like to kind of just prove that that, that theory that, uh, really, you know, isn't a viable argument against marijuana. Um, and then so, uh, also too, as far as um, how it affects me and you, uh, um, over a billion can be made in taxes for, uh, for California uh, if it was legalized today. Um, and we have uh, $23 billion in debt right now, uh, if you guys didn't know that. We're in one of the worst financial crises um, um, in a long time for our, our state. Uh, so, so 1.4 billion in revenue can be made uh, in taxes on it, and that's per the California State Board. Uh, they did like a whole thing to going on when we were passing that prop to, to check and see uh, how much can actually be be made off of uh, taxing it, and you know going and, and just eliminating the, the criminalization process and all that stuff. Um, and uh, what 1.4 billion can do for me and you is uh, hire 23,000 teachers, police officers, and firefighters. Uh, you know, that's, that's pretty big right now, especially too with the, the freeze that there is on, you know, police and stuff like that. That's huge. Um, and then what it can also help too is, uh, for Aaron over here, uh, it could actually pay for the whole entire parks and recreation for the state of California. The whole program can be paid for every year just by uh, legalizing marijuana. Um, and then on a national level now, uh, as far as, as what it, it um, is spent, it's 40, um, 42 billion is spent nationally on the, on the drug war. Now that encompasses everything, but marijuana is also a big contributor to that. Um, you know, that's DEA, raids, border, all that stuff that goes on trying to just get rid of uh, the crop itself. 51% um, of prison inmates 
are for drug-related charges. Uh, what that what that also um, is um, what that also includes is, is of these 51 percent, uh, there's 22,000 or it's uh, 22,000 dollars is spent on these inmates um, every year that they're in prison, which uh, equals two billion a year. Um, so that's a lot that we're actually paying for. It's all coming out of our tax money on. Um, now, not 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 in all cases, but most of the time, you know, it's non-violent crimes. It's just drug, drug, drug charges. Um, so, uh, if it was legalized nationally, ten to fourteen billion can be taken off that forty-two billion dollar tap, um, just through uh, taxes and you know just regulations and stuff like that. Um, and uh, you know, when we when we put these uh, people in there, you're treating them, you know, like I said. Uh, Nonviolent people, like criminals, sometimes, and uh, how this affects me and uh, something that I uh, that uh, has come into my life is, um, you know, everyone has two grandfathers, and uh, I didn't know one of my grandfathers. I've never known him, just because I never met him. Um, I met my other grandfather, that was uh, behind uh, going through a prison gate. Um, don't know much about him other than like when we go in there and visit him at the correctional facility. Uh, he was always pleasant. Um, he wasn't. Angry ass. Like, he never did a violent crime or anything, but he's in jail my whole entire life. Uh, my senior year in high school, uh, he got let out um, of prison because he got liver cancer. Uh, I only got to spend one Christmas with my, with my grandfather. Uh, don't know much about him, and it, you know it kind of sucks because uh, it was just for something. It was just you know for something that I feel you know could have he could have had a way shorter sentence. You know had he been not treated as so much as a criminal for something you know of that caliber. Um, so yeah, so uh, and, and then uh, that also with him being um, you know hospitalized with cancer and stuff that uh, that also goes into uh, medical patients who have like legit medical problems to where they can use uh, medical marijuana. Uh, you know, everyone knows it releases like swelling, pain, and all that stuff for like uh, you know chemotherapy patients, um, and. Uh, does anyone does anyone know anyone who like uh, actually like went through or seen chemotherapy and like what it does to a person you know like cancer and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, you know it really it does it, it does a lot to you. Uh, what it, at first it, it gets rid of your appetite, um, so you have like no appetite to eat. So a lot of people uh, lose or lose. My grandmother pretty much went through chemotherapy as well. Uh, so cancer is, is kind of big in my family. Uh, she went through chemotherapy. Uh, she lost. She's she's not a very big. She's about my height. Uh, she lost thirty pounds, like over thirty pounds, um, on chemotherapy. Uh, she wouldn't smoke medical marijuana because she was scared of it. You know, she thought it was illegal. She thought she would get in trouble. Uh, she lost a lot of weight from it. She was in pain all the time, and it really just killed me seeing her like that. You know, uh, it was it's was, it was pretty rough. You know, it's, it's just because she's so like kind-hearted, and you know, she's my grandmother, and I love her to death. And seeing her in pain, and like she just looked like skin and bones, and it was. Just, it was real hard. It was real hard for her to get through that, and uh, you know, I just think that it would have been better for her had had it uh, been legal. Had she not been scared of it, had it just been you know something that doctors would, would recommend more than just having her go on medications and throwing up and just going through it the hard way. Um, and uh, that's one story for me as far as uh, but uh, there's another one as well. Um, my neighbor across the street, who I've known like my whole life, living um, in Chino about eight years, nine years, um, he got actually a uh, throat cancer. Uh, it wasn't, it was a, uh, like, he didn't know about it for the longest time, um, and he went to the doctor finally because his throat hurt, and they found it. Uh, so he went through the process. Uh, he couldn't find doctors who could actually work on it, um, and it was growing fast. Like, it, was, it moved in quick from when he found it. Uh, he eventually found this one research and a doctor who was recommending it to him, um, it's an oil that you extract from the, the actual plant itself, but um, it's 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 not something that you can just go into the, to even the uh, dispensaries and get. It's something that you have to produce in everything yourself because there's no medical place that's doing it. And, and the doctor explained the whole thing to him and told him where to get the information on how to do it. So he actually started growing his own his own crop, um, but he died before he could even use the crop that he was growing. So. Uh, yeah, that, that was that was kind of that was kind of rough uh, to to hear. Um, so um, you know, pretty much like what I was trying to come up here today and do is uh, not just come here and give you guys like the the facts that we all know, uh, but to to kind of like see how 
to tell you how you can benefit from it and uh, how it's actually affecting people every day that is that is kept illegal. Um, you know, people need it. Uh, people want it to, I mean, just, just be legal in general. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind it myself. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, th I definitely think uh, that the research is there, everything's been done to make it legal. It's just we need to vote and, you know, we need people to like really rally and be passionate about it. And like, you know, like Mr. Kirkham said, he hears it every year, but I still want to come up here and uh, give this speech and hopefully get you guys to support. Of a correctional facility for cancer, did they let him smoke after? Because he went for no, he, he uh he didn't smoke it because what he has a liver cancer, so um they wouldn't. Yeah, he didn't need it. Uh, they, they didn't even give him operation or anything. He just did they just go, did he go to prison for marijuana? Uh, it was marijuana, and I I I'm, I know it was marijuana for sure, but I I, I think there might have been cocaine, but they didn't tell me. My parents, <laughs> my parents didn't tell me that it's a my, this is a possibility. It's a very valid possibility. <laughs> I was just wondering if they let him out and then again, you know, let him smoke on top of it because going away for it and yeah. let you go. And then well, no, he didn't get treated, so he didn't get chemotherapy. They just, he had to pretty just much just die. It was, yeah. it was just too late to give him chemo? No, he was on the organ donor list because you can't get chemo for your liver. Oh, okay. You can't kill your liver. <laughs> it's like, chemo is for like when you, like, uh, my grandma had intestinal, so. Okay. Um, I like to give my condolences. Yeah, yeah. That because I just lost my dad uh, two weeks ago. So I, I, I know, you know, even though you didn't know him, it's still I just want to say because that's what my dad died of liver cancer. He had many different things, but liver cancer was what he died of. So. Did you, were you with him? Uh, no, I wasn't with him at the time. Yeah, I, I was with dad when he passed, so it was really hard, you know. So, um, I just wanted to get my control. Yeah, I saw him the other day before. I was, it was terrible. Because honestly, and I saw my grandma in the house. Anyway, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to deal with. Even though you didn't really know much about him, it's just like, you know, but it, it's hard. So. All right, well, Simon, what did you think? Uh, other than the cliche topic, um, I thought it was generally very informative. Um, although a lot of the stuff uh, I kind of already knew from the, a lot of speeches and a lot of things in the media. Um, but generally, uh, the only problem I had with it was, was structurally. I thought that uh, some of the support, although it had a lot of emotional appeal, you didn't really um, use it to address your overarching argument. I thought um, you were trying to uh, convince us that that uh, tax uh, that that tax that legalizing uh, marijuana will benefit us uh, with taxes and it would like decriminalize it and save us a lot of money, but uh, you know some of the stuff I don't know there was this one section in the beginning um, about like cancer and and you know marijuana being a gateway drug I thought that was just totally irrelevant to the structure overall and that your examples it had a lot of emotional appeal but. Again, you kind of, you know, it was underdeveloped in terms of, um, of your overarching theme. So that, that was about it. Okay. All right, well, those are pretty reasonable points. I do think at the beginning you're not as, I mean, we know what your topic is, and we know generally what your take on the topic is, but I think you need to be a little bit sharper. I think that's the point that Simon's making is it sounds like it's going to be really about the tax issue at one point, but that doesn't turn out to be what it is. It's, it's more generic than that. It's covering a lot of different issues. It does feel a little bit like you're just kind of randomly bouncing from topic to topic. I got cancer, I got gateway, I got taxes, I've got uh, the drug war, I've got a value argument, I've got medical benefits. It's just like what's next you know there's another there's another thing in the queue that's coming up on those kinds of things i think you know there's a way to maybe present all of those things together in a more coherent manner if you were to say you know that uh, the world would be a better place if marijuana was legal and that's the only you know goal that i'm going to be talking about is will it be better if it was legal than if it's illegal let's talk about the things that make it problematic because it's illegal and let's talk about the things that make it better if it's legal, 
uh, okay, then it's got then it would have a little bit more coherence. It's still going to be a broad subject when you're talking about it, but at least we'd know exactly what the nature of your argument is. Yeah, you're dependent on a lot of examples, and some of the examples are a little incomplete and uncertain. You had this quote from the UCLA study, and I thought that that was interesting, except it didn't really sound like it's a quote. It sounds like it's a paraphrase, and you do want to give a direct quote and make sure you give us a source citation because that's a, a you know generic listing that you've got there, and I think that's a little bit problematic. Um, the example of your friend who had throat cancer, uh, you know, in the long run, it doesn't help you very much. He, he died before he even got a chance to do this. We don't know whether or not that works. There's no fault. There wasn't any original research. You mentioned the doctor that uh, talked to him about this. Well, what was the research that the doctor was basing this on? And like I said, you're all over the place talking about a lot of different issues here. And so it gets a, a little bit confusing. Um, and you know, it, because of that, it's not very consistent. I think your delivery is pretty good. You, you do a good job talking to us for the most part. Uh, you engage the audience. There's good eye contact, and you seem very naturalistic. And, and you use your time pretty effectively. Uh, I just think that it, you know, the argument itself needs to be a lot more coherent. And the proof needs to be stronger, too. I, I, the, the tax thing, I think you actually had your, your best information on um, because you did have... Uh, sort of a source citation on it, although again, it's, I mean, I know the group that, or the organization that you're citing there, it's, but the referent in the presentation needs to be sharper. All right, thank you.